what's up youtubers it's Zephroth here and today we are in my basement my basement's the only messy part of my house but um it's full finished basement this is just one room in it we have a bathroom and big area <laughs> you can have a bar you don't use the bar <clears throat> today i'm going to be showing you guys a couple of sword fighting techniques sword fighting is something that's really badass because guns are awesome but um i don't know guns seem kind of cheating I've always thought guns are cheating. Yeah, you do have to hit your target, and yeah, if it's long range combat, it can be really difficult. But let's say me and you are five feet away. If we're fighting, it matters who's fastest, smartest, and all that, blah, blah, blah. If we're using a sword or our fists, with a gun, a three year old could blow my head off. You know, that's why guns are kind of cheating. <laughs> but don't worry, I still like guns. <clears throat> um, but, anyways, so here I'm, I'm actually using. Not a practice sword, but a plastic sword. There's three different types you can get. You can get, um, there's steel ones, but they don't have cutting edges. And those will replicate the most realistic of battles. You should be able to keep up your speed. You'll get to feel the weight and all that. There's the middle ground, which is kind of realistic, but won't hurt as much, which is wooden. And then there's plastic, which cuts down your speed. You don't get the real feel for it. But I'm not going to hurt anybody. I actually should have grabbed out my wooden ones. Actually, I should have grabbed out my real one. But um, whenever you are practicing, especially for your first like year, full year, um, <clears throat> I recommend using plastic or, you know, training. Don't use your real ones because you don't want to cut yourself. I've been doing this for two years. Um, not on and off. Pretty solid. Two years. And I'll be showing you guys some tricks with it. Let me think of anything else. No, I think we can just get right started. Now what this one is, it's rapier. Rapiers are mostly meant for speed, obviously, and they, they, they're they they're really good at stabbing, so, you know, that's really good. You've probably seen them in fencing, because there's three different types of kind of sword fighting. You have LARPing, which is big major battles. Usually they use styrofoam there, but if you can get people with armor, or a lot of money, or a big field, or capture bases, which I've actually got before, then you can actually bring in whatever you want. Um, we usually use gigantic plastic things to small, normal rapiers and all that. I didn't use this in LARPing. I actually haven't learned LARPing in like a long time. I think I've only learned once or twice. <clears throat> but anyways, I don't even know why I'm coughing. Maybe it's this room. This room is crappy. <laughs> um, the second type is sparring. Sparring is usually just normal sword fighting, except you probably aren't using real weapons and trying to kill each other. I don't know. Since you probably won't kill anybody with a sword, <laughs> you know, you. this is just for fun. And um, the last one is fencing. Now, fencing, I don't know if I can show you guys, but you put your arm right here, like this, and you kind of stand out like this. Now, it's an incorrect pose, but I'm trying to fit it in this little camera here. <clears throat> but kind of like this. Now, fencing is mainly about kind of stabbing the person, um, and you have to deflect each one. Some fencing tournaments actually have you stab in like a specific place, whether that be the heart or the head, sometimes other places. Um, but if you're doing just normal fencing, all you have to do is attempt to stab your opponent. I know that sounds super easy, but you actually have to think about things. Maybe you're wondering why you do this. Well, when you're in heated battle, you usually have a tendency to want to use your other hand to beat the crap out of the other person, so you put it over here. Um, and also, you can kind of lunge yourself over. Here, I'll do it without my hand. Pretty fast, but if I lunge myself, you can get it pretty well. Um... Spinning and all that can be used for blocking. Here, I'll show you one thing that you never do. You never hold a sword like this. Looks badass, but I can barely block that. Like, I'm going to use all my strength right now. I'm going to use my left hand, which isn't as strong as my right hand here. And I'm going to easily, with one finger, push it back. <laughs> Where, if I hold it normal, I use one finger, not even close. See? Always, if you're going to have a guard on your sword, keep them over your knuckles. The reason why you have guards on your sword is because if somebody hits you in the knuckles, you're probably going to want to drop it. Do not drop your weapon. <laughs> um, also, there's there's a couple cool tricks I'm going to show you guys, but this is mostly for intimidation or to kind of get back in the groove. Um, as a matter of fact, actually, I'm incorrect. You can use this for very, very small, like dirks or daggers. Um, actually, not really dirks. And uh, definitely do not do this if you have double-edged. Like here and here is both sharp. I don't really like them. They do help if you do overswing. But you never want to overswing in real life. If your opponent is right here in front of you, you're going to want to stop right here. Just like that. 
and you always want to be able to break air. Not always, but if you if you're getting into a good shot and you're not trying to deflect, like don't put much energy energy into deflecting. Just try to keep and stand your ground. But if you find like an opening, um, put as much into it as possible. Break air. I don't know if you guys could hear that, but I broke air. <clears throat> um, what else? Uh, oh yeah. Like I said, I'm gonna show you guys how to do cool tricks. Now, if you have one of these guards right here, it's really easy to do these tricks. I'm gonna do them without the guard here in a second, but I'm gonna show you it with the guard. Also, this is not very good. You should either have a circle all the way around, like a normal one, because this one would cut you if it was real steel. Um, or you can have it flat, and if it's flat, it makes you go faster, but it might be harder to grip. So all you're going to do is, and that's how you spin it. You can spin it the other way too. Uh, I don't know if this is picking up. I'll try to go a little bit slower. All right. <clears throat> but yeah, you just take your hand and you slide it all the way around, and it usually kind of goes by itself. Now, if you don't have the guard, you're going to want to take it between your thumb and your index finger, pointer, whatever you want to call it, and you're going to just spin it around like that. See, I'm not using the guard at all. As a matter of fact, I'll put it back here. And you're just going to hold on to it there. And I'll do it slowly so you can see my hand. You're going to take it back and forward. Back and forward. Now, like I said, none of these can really be used in battle. But until I get a sparring opponent, I'm not going to be able to show you guys that. Um, that's what I was going to show you guys. Oh, yeah, you can do it between the fingers. This is kind of big to be able to do it between the fingers. But between the fingers, it's kind of like that really hard you're just going to take it in between these two right here see them so these two right here middle finger and pointer and then just swing it up use your momentum so it's like yeah and of course to switch it to backhand which i told you is not really important do it like this you can also use it with a katana like this you can block like this and this but if you don't have a shield in this hand that's not good um and if you're going to dual wield I recommend keeping a normal stance and try to stay to the side. This one for blocking your front and this one for attacking. Dual wielding really isn't that useful, but if you get really good at it and learn all the styles, there's not too many, but I think there's like four or five really good ones. Of course, there's a bunch of minor ones that don't really matter. But yeah, if you get really good at it, dual wielding can actually work. Um, also, what you're going to want to do is to juggle. Um, kind of like this. Learn how to do juggling and all that. And that's not even for fencing, that's all the time. So you can do it quickly like this. Because doing it like this just really isn't going to work. So you're going to juggle it over here and then block. Or swing out. You're just going to learn all of the cool techniques. It's all on the wrist. If you thought bowling and basketball is on the wrist, you should see what you can do with sword fighting, you know? Just swing this thing all over. <laughs> Don't ever do that in battle. <laughs> um, what else was I going to tell you guys? I'll bring out some cooler weapons in the next episode. And uh, we'll go over a bunch of different things. Um, there's also kind of a rock, paper, scissors kind of thing going on with sword fighting where, you know, um, axe beats shield. Axes have a tendency to really cut through splintering things. And also, if it has this, you know, because an axe kind of comes out and curves, and then there's usually from the handle and to the axe, there's a little bit. You can grab onto the shield and pull it back, and you can kick them. Don't ever kick like this. <laughs> kick to the side. <clears throat> Or kick really fast, I guess, if you kick like that. Just so make sure they can't grab you, and uh, you put a bunch of force into it. Um, let's see. Don't crawl on your toes. Bad idea. <laughs> and don't ever kick with your toes, either. <clears throat> um, it's also really good to learn some type of martial arts. Um, usually close quarters combat with sword fighting. Not really the tanglement of MMA, because, you know, MMA, sometimes you have to get them on the ground. Sometimes there's grapples. Grapples really don't work against shields at all, and they it's way harder to do it against somebody that's armed with a weapon. Um, so, you know, just try to do close quarters combat and all that, boxing, kickboxing, blah, 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 blah. Um, ninjutsu can actually work with it. I've seen a lot of weapons integrated into it. But also, some people are like, oh, ninjutsu is just a bunch of different fighting styles. Yeah, but it's also a lot about learning your opponents and doing it right on the fly. Um, what else was I going to tell you guys? Um, oh yeah, so like, you're going to want to keep a steady grip, especially when you're blocking and going to hit, but like I said, for juggling, go ahead and keep your hand. Like, I don't know if you guys have ever played the drums, drums, <laughs> drums, um, 
but you don't want to hold the drumstick like this and bash on it. <laughs> That's not going to work. You want to hold it kind of lightly so you can keep hitting it and it kind of rattles in your hand. Um, let me think here. I, I, I'm, I'm pretty skilled in a lot of different weaponry and all of it can work very well. And um, I'd like to teach you guys about it, show you guys how badass I am. Maybe you guys can be badass. Maybe someday if I get a bunch of money, you know, I'll do some LARPing things. If not, we can spar. For any of you that think LARPing is for noobs, or, I mean, nerds, <laughs> um, yeah, it is, because they use styrofoam, and it looks really, really weird, and, um, I've never done LARPing where they're like, firebolt, and, you know, that's your own style, I'm not gonna make fun of you for that, but it's not really realistic, and it doesn't really show your strength or anything. Whenever I do LARPing, we use real, at least, models of real weapons, and we hurt each other. <laughs> Good amount. We try not to take out each other's eyes or break bones or anything like that, but we hurt each other, and um, not seriously or anything, but it, it's it's just a lot of fun to see who's strong in strength and see what you can do. We captured bases. I climbed walls with these, <laughs> you know, and it's really, really, really cool, and it's an awesome thing to collect. I mean, if you like collecting jewelry, rocks, blah, 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 it's another thing cool to collect. And I doubt any of us will get in any samurai battles or anything, but I'm going to show you everything I know except for one thing, which is how I kind of deflect damage where I don't feel it at all. Um, don't get me wrong, if you break my bones or cut me in half, I'm going to feel it, unless I instantly die. <laughs> but I do know a way to take care of any minor or medium injuries without feeling any pain at all. And I will not teach you guys that, but if you can spot it out, props to you. Um, in the comments, I want you guys to tell me what type of weapons you have, what type of weapons you want to see me use or learn how to use yourselves because I can teach you guys. And even if I can't teach you guys, I just want to know what your guys' little setup loadout's going to be because that would be pretty cool. Uh, maybe here soon I'll take some pictures of you guys and I'll put them right in the beginning of these videos. But I've been rambling on, you know, a really long vlog here. <laughs> and I also have to do one or two more real life things other than my video games, you know, um, making and my video game recording uh that i usually do for you guys so you know yeah thanks for watching i'm gonna be getting a bunch more videos up and i will see you guys later